What up, hustlers? Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? And loved it. You know, like little four by three TV. Uh, yeah. Do you remember oh, Pan and Scan? And Did you guys? Where, oh, when you was it like widescreen? No, yeah, it was so like, like real just, yeah, stretched and skewed and just basically whatever fits in. And there's like black thing at the top and the bottom. You're just trying to, exactly. you got your little, and sometimes, we had a black and white TV and it was the size of a chair and I would just sit in front of it with my Sigma Master system. <laughs> yeah. And yes, yeah, great right. times. <laughs> so, so Sonic, I thought I'd like back then. Man. But compared to what came before, that was a big jump forward, going from the know, massive jetpack and Pac Man and stuff. Oh, the, just the, the quality difference. And then when they shifted again yeah. and went to um, in the Nintendo 64 and did just Mario, Mario 64, yeah, yeah. I lost my mind. Like, that was you know, the, <laughs> the jump there. That was like, even now, the game, I mean, the graphics aren't amazing, but the game holds up. Like, if you play it, uh, I'm a yeah, bit of yeah. a gamer, if you can tell. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, it's, just, it's crazy uh, how they've held up. So, yeah, back then, like, Sonic coming out was just, just blew yeah. me out of the park. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree entirely. Um, yeah, Sega Master. And Star Wars, fantastic. the graphics there were crazy. But if you watch it these days, if you watch one of the uh, undigitally remastered versions, um, mm-hmm. in one of the movies where... Um, is it Luke? He falls down and there's that big monster in the cave he's got to fight off and he hides under the rock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The graphics on that is atrocious. It's, like, it's massive oh, black no and white like, behind the Oh, yeah, the yeah. But back then, it was, it was incredible. Like, for what they've done is... <laughs> it, yeah, it, totally. Awesome. In, particular, in particular when you're seeing it as a kid. I, I think that's why it stays with you so long. So oh, I, I thought I loved making films. And so I ended up at university studying uh, filmmaking. And actually, for a long time, um, you know, I then became a teacher and I taught filmmaking. I made films, um, just like short films and documentaries, like uh, concert DVDs. Um, cool. But then, and that was all good. That's also how I ended up managing the cinema, like an independent two-screen cinema, because I was just, I was known as a film guy. My brand was like the film guy. But then yeah, I had my that's daughter. Really interesting, uh, to, yeah, it's Yeah, it's... And I loved it, you know, you, you, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. I was like, man, I, I get to teach filmmaking, I make films, I, I run a cinema, this is awesome, I'm winning. And then um, my daughter was born, and I got postnatal yeah. depression, which I, I didn't know guys could get. And, okay. um, and I had to very quickly start to manage that. And I realized I'd, that I'd also had depression and anxiety most of my life. Because whilst I decided, whilst I was managing the postnatal depression, yeah. I had some days where I was happy. And I was like, oh, hang on. You can be happy in life. I just, I just thought you just <laughs> suffered <laughs> and just yeah. you had some good days and some bad days. But I, I, I started to discover you could actually be content and happy and, and euphoric. Um, and that's how I came across kind of neurolinguistic programming. That's how I started to read uh, so much. It's also the epiphany moment. It's holding my daughter and realizing that no parent brings their child into the world and says, wow, I hope they grow up with like self-esteem issues and anxiety and depression. I hope they get a of job course. that they hate and they work 50, 60 hours a week until they die. <laughs> That's not why I brought yeah. them into the world. So I need, to, I need to establish a life where she doesn't have to do that. And I also found of course, from being in, no working in... Ed- that. Exactly right. And also found from yeah. being in education um, that, that I teach 16 to 19 year olds. So they've come through the education system They've developed through secondary education, self-esteem issues, okay. some serious mental health issues, getting more and more yeah. over time. And they have no life skills. Like, they have no ability to like, critique the world. So if I say, oh, when you get a job, um, like, how many days a week do you want to work? And they're like, oh, you have to work five. I say, well, who told you that? Like, haven't you read like, yeah. <laughs> Tim Ferriss's book? Like, <laughs> you can work don't four you know? hours a week if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they don't understand how much they should make. Um, and they were basically programmed into this idea of selling our time for money and not very much money. Um, course, so that was yeah. my kind of epiphany moment that, you know, I loved my daughter so much, but then I realized that I cared for my, my students even more. Um, and I just wanted to help everybody have this kind of epif- epiphany moment. And the reason I mentioned films is I realized it wasn't filmmaking that I loved it was a narrative within films called The Hero's Journey and this is okay. uh, it was discovered by a guy called Joseph Campbell but a guy called Chris Vogler applied it directly to film and it's this, it's a story you see in all films uh, it's really obvious in fantasy films so you start off in fact you'll stick with Star Wars because it's easy uh, you, uh, <laughs> so you're <laughs> so you're Luke 
<laughs> exactly right. Oh, they should do. Um, oh, they, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Luke. You start off on Tatooine. You're in the farm, and uh, you can you know you can complain all you like. I don't want to be a farmer. I want to go off and do this. I want to go do that. And then Ben Kenobi comes along, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to come and do this?" And Luke's like, "No, I've got farming to do because yeah, we all want this call to adventure. And it might be Dumbledore, it could be Gandalf, it could be anyone, but the Absolutely. hero yeah. doesn't." isn't like a glory seeker. They don't want to go on an adventure because that makes them kind of egotistical, I guess. Um, so you of refuse course. the call because it's supposed to be scary. But then something happens or you get a mentor as we do in real life and they say, no, 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 you can do this. You'll be okay. You can do this. And you start, you go off hey, on the Laura. journey and you, <laughs> and you learn the skills on the journey to win. Like Luke wasn't a Jedi in, you know, Star Wars. He wasn't a Jedi in Empire Strikes Back. Exactly. He was, he was a farmer. Was a Jedi. Exactly. Yeah. So whatever you want to do in life, just start. And I realized that being the hero of, of our own journeys is what life is about. Finding adventures that are a little bit higher than our uh, like ability level is how we then grow. Obviously, you can't go full on and you know, go off with a, on an adventure that's way out. Like if Luke had gone from Star Wars to the battle with the Emperor <laughs> like in two days, he wouldn't have survived. Like you need to go yeah, on the journey. Massive story behind it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I just started to live my life like that. And that's how I ended up writing a book um, called Level Up Your Teens to help teenagers uh, deal with life. It's how I started writing Beautiful. about things. Um, yeah. And I'm just uh, engaging with people on a global level like this. It's just amazing. Yeah, and, and the way the internet now where you can actually connect with literally anyone, it's, it is amazing. And it's, you know, the, the way that I guess you're yeah, coming with technology, going back to, say, the Star Wars, uh, you know, the, the graphics and then, you know, um, with a Sonic and then you know Mario, it's it's just fantastic how things are progressing. But uh, yeah, coming exactly back right. to the whole narrative there. Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, basically I, I was just, just gonna, with. Sure, man, go for it. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that um, uh, with you, when you're talking about graphics, you, you're so right, and we've seen this change happen. But now you've got people and parents and um, telling their kids to do jobs that that are going to be replace everything's going to, there's so many things Absolutely. that are going to just yeah. stop being job be obsolete that's the word i was looking for thanks um and we you know we're preparing our kids and us to work in 2040 like we've got no clue that if you take us back to 1997 or 1987 and try and imagine the world now like there's going to be augmented reality, virtual reality. There's going to be jobs that don't exist. So the best oh, way absolutely. to live your life and, and to prepare my daughter is to um, just be curious and compassionate about the world and to be able to pivot careers because you don't, no one stays in the same career for 40 years anymore. No, that's it. It's, on average, you'll stay in a position for five years now. So it's really such that's a short turnaround. And, and uh, I don't know if it's just because of, say, you know, the, the amount of information that we can now receive, but I almost feel as if I've, brought just learnt uh like an adult adhd type scenario where, sure. you know it's now just you know you'll have such a short focus on one thing and another which i guess in entrepreneurship is kind of i've utilized that to be able to i guess manage or juggle several different things at once which is good but if you're not able to do that really if, if you're jumping from one thing to the next you're not going to progress because you're not really evolving in a, a skill or you know really learning to a degree i mean you can certainly learn little bits of everything which is awesome but you know, to say with film, I imagine, you know, you were really um, extensive in your knowledge for that. And that would have really pushed you a lot further should you chose to have moved forward in that career path. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of those, well, the thing is, most things you do will have transferable skills these days. And film's kind of, uh, you know, uh, so relevant now. Um, and talking in front of camera, you know, it comes from teaching. You, a lot of the time, the skills you've got in any job, you can, you can, um, kind of transition or pivot into something else even yeah, if you yeah, are transferable. A, annoying yeah like if you're on an annoying um a job you know your minimum wage maybe working in a uh, fast food restaurant and i say this to you know people with that life and i'm like well, what yeah. are you what are you learning while you're there are you just going in there switching off your brain like being a sheep like oh i'm just like a like a, a zombie that works in the shop or are you going in hmm. there being like okay what was a good example of management and leadership that my that my kind of uh, boss gave today what was the excellent example of customer service what is good customer service what's the health and yeah. safety rules of running this place if i was to take what i've learned here and set up my own burger van on in a festival could i do that and what skills do i need to do that and really because every job is is like a mini degree you can take so much value from it Absolutely. if you're being active yeah. like you, you could literally keep a journal and be like what did i learn about t today from my job but not many people do think that way 
Yeah, absolutely. And like using, say, fast food and McDonald's, for instance, their managerial program yeah. is actually fantastic. Like the amount of research yeah, yeah. that was put in to training their staff to then be able to progress into management is just phenomenal. Like, and you know, it's, it's not everyone wants to flip burgers, but if starting out, you know, as a kid, we all had those you know, jobs that we didn't want to do. No, no disrespect to those that, you know, are in, you know, managerial positions now in, in fast food. But just sure. as an example, just if we, you know, don't want to do that as a career path, if that's not for us, we still did it as a child and or as a, a younger person. And, uh, yeah, their managerial yeah. programs are just great. Like, you can actually learn so much from them in regards to how to manage others, how to work with others, yeah. um, just how to manage your time better. Because McDonald's is, is you know, go, go, go. So, you got to fit all that in. Is is actually it's a lot of work. Exactly, it's team building, it's branding that they've got going on. It's working to under pressure. It's dealing with yeah. ag ag aggressive customers. It's there's a ton of value that we just dismiss. Yeah, absolutely. We just look at it and say, oh, well, it's it's uh, you know it's just fast food. But it's really it's it's not just that. It's it's uh, you know it is a career uh, you know op opportunity for some. But it's more just, you know, personally that the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, it's not something I personally wanted to do, but, you know, not, not to dismiss it because it's, it really can be a great opportunity for, for many, especially for, for those yeah. that are, they don't know what to do. And they thought, well, how do I get a managerial position? Because, you know, once you've got a managerial position behind you, that looks fantastic on your resume, your CV, where you can take that to then any position. Say, hey, I was a manager for two Absolutely years. Absolutely does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't Absolutely. matter how many so, staff, no, if you're managing two staff. It's amazing. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, Darren, let's let's get into a bit more of uh, so your your story, um, your uh, book that you've written. Let's let's yeah. touch base on that because yeah, yeah, I think every entrepreneur wants to write a book. Um, I I certainly want yeah. to. So you've actually done it. <laughs> so you know. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 advice really is uh, don't overthink it. Like it's your first book, and I I almost got lost in the whole you know wanting to buy courses like oh i'll show you how to make a best-selling book on amazon like your first book that's a lot of work like i you know i had a day job um so i've got a day job teaching media at, at college and then i yeah. run a martial arts studio in evenings and i've got a daughter i've got a family like writing a book on the side yeah. like if i can just get the book written that's the goal so okay. i would um, so i just wrote what i knew and i'd spent the year you know um Learning, reading and learning how to manage my emotions anyway. So I'd come across mindfulness. I, I'd done a neuro-linguistic programming course. I, you know, uh, Stoic philosophy is really big right now. And I developed all these techniques. And this guy called Kevin Cruz is, is one of my mentors. He um, said that um, if you're going into a job and you've got a, and you, the person going up against you has got a business card, but you've got like a business card in a book, you're, yeah. you've got more, authority and in fact you know the word author is part of authority it's a great credibility builder but what i was going to say is my big moment for writing a book is i started to filter in smaller books because if you say oh a book that's like okay. it's going to take three years to write and it's going to be forty thousand words it doesn't have to be forty thousand words it does like, if you get a publisher a publisher will want it to be forty thousand sixty thousand words so it's a nice yeah. thick yeah. big book and they can charge 25.99 for it or whatever they need to do and how many yeah. reviews have you read where they've read in, like a nonfiction book and said, this is just a TED talk with padding. And so, and most of us don't have time to read that. Like I, I've read those books, you know, I get halfway through or three quarters of the way through and I'm like, I get it. I don't need to read the rest of this. I get what you're saying. So, yeah. and because my was saying fluff. teenagers, it's just fluff. So I started to filter in books that were like a hundred pages or 80 okay. pages. And I was That's like, oh, well, I can do that. And I'd started writing articles, just, you know, started out on medium.com. And you write an article, you know, 1,000 words, 1,500 words. You then start to realize that if you're doing one of those a week, well, in six months, you've got a book. So it yeah. became, so once you realize a chapter is, you know, maybe just 1,500 words, you can start doing one of those a week. Um, and then once you've got, you know, 12 chapters, you're done. And then publish. Don't faff around. <laughs> like, yeah. I was quite lucky because <laughs> I, I was turning 40. And um, I was at, I'm... I'm I'm publishing this on my 40th birthday for sure yeah. or in whatever state yeah. it's in. Because I heard this, I think it's a technical, um, it's from like the tech industry and the, the gaming industry. Um, and it's, I think it's your most, uh, most viable product, I think it's called. And it basically says, if you release a product and you're happy with it, you waited too long. And so yeah. Yeah. we're seeing all these kind of like apps and games being released that you think there's flaws with this. And yeah. then they have to fix it on the go. With your book, the difference between 80% good and 100% good 
you're the only person who's going to pick up on that. Like, you're going to see all the flaws no matter what. So get yep. it 80% good and release. And if you genuinely it. think yeah. it's going to add value to somebody's world or life and you think it can enhance somebody's life, then you're selfish not to publish it. Like, you've got to get it out there to help. So I know, I know it's a long kind of rant, but um, it's... No, I agree with it's you, though, 100%. Infinitely, and it's infinitely easy. Like, to, once you've written the book, in a Word document, you literally just go to Amazon. You can go to, like, KDP, Amazon, just Google it, or Create Space. And in, yep. in terms of KDP, Amazon, you upload the Word document. A little kind of fake Kindle comes up, and it says, this is what it would look like on Kindle. Is that okay? You say yes, and yeah. then you hit publish. Like, Perfect. there's no gatekeepers anymore. It's, it's, That's it. You know, and Amazon, um, especially with, with Kindle, is just, you can write a book yeah. now, like, from anywhere in the world. And if you have it, yeah. so... You, I don't know if they've changed it, but when you know, I looked into a few years back, if you had it specifically just on Amazon Kindle or nowhere else, they would actually promote your work for you more. And if you're not happy with the results, nice. that's what second and third publishing is for. You can always just edit it later. Yeah. And how you many get the books reviews? are there being when, yeah. um, It's like music albums as well. Like, you know, how many times have things been re-released three years later with a different cover or a different title and it does better? Yeah. Or the time is right. It's like... You know, I didn't write the book to make a ton of money, which is convenient because it hasn't been yeah, a ton of yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. They never do. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. But I, I like the feeling. And it's certainly... Um, uh, and I tell you the other thing, by writing that book, that knowledge has gone like deep into my mind. Like it's, it's, it's probably changed the way I, I, I view the world, I guess, because, um, you know, I've read that so many... It's like, it's like studying in a, in a deeper level. Yeah. So the process is fun. But I, I would recommend it. I, I just keep thinking, my only advice all the time is don't overthink it. As it, Your job as a writer is to move the cursor from left to right and just keep doing that there are many, many times. Yeah, no, and then eventually you'll have enough. <laughs> that's fantastic advice. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone that's listening in, if you ever thought about writing a book, just uh, type in, uh, in the comments, hashtag book. We'd love to hear from yeah, you because yeah. this is some awesome advice if you're ever going to write a book. So, you know, Darren, I really appreciate this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, let's, let's um, you know, if you want to touch base a bit more on, on your book, let's, let's do that. Or how about we get into more sure. of uh, with, with your teaching? Because, you know, I think that's really interesting. Yeah. So you're helping children, especially with uh, social anxiety, and, and I haven't really learned much about the real yeah. world. And let's, uh, let's honestly, dive into that. Honestly, dude, I don't know what it's like in – well, I know that there's a big issue in America. I don't know about Australia. But mental health issues are on the rise. So if you look at pri primary school kids, so like, you know, whatever, like five to ten, I guess – they're all happy. Yeah. And, you, and if you ask them a question, they raise their hand. They're really excited to be part of the class they, and they want to contribute. And they've got amazing dreams of wanting to be like astronauts or whatever. And then the secondary yeah. school, so, you know, um, like, kind of the teenage years, something has happened. You know, they, they stop worrying. They stop wanting to contribute. They stop wanting to answer questions. Their dreams have changed as well. They, they're just like, ah, yeah. it's all right. I don't know. And, you know, and it frustrates me because, you know, I'm a media specialist, so I understand the negative impact the media is having on us. Like, from the moment they're born, no other generation has had this as bad, but the moment they're born, they've been, they've been influenced by the media to be unhappy because there's money in their unhappiness. So whether it's, you know, you need yeah. this product to feel, to have self-esteem, you need to look this way, you need to compare yourself to these people, just ongoing. So they, their self-esteem is destroyed and... A lot of the time, the things they value aren't valued by their parents or society. So, so oh, mm -hmm. they just keep gaming, or, or I don't understand this YouTube thing they're doing, or um, I don't get Snapchat, that just seems stupid. It's like, oh, if yeah. you take a moment, they can monetize any one of those things. And, Absolutely. And, there's, there's plenty of kids now on YouTube that are making six figures just from yes. having a following. And, you know, some in the older generations, they don't really understand, you know, it's um, they're basically, well, you know, they're just talking fluff and it's like, but that's what the audience wants. They want exactly. from that demographic exactly. of, you know, young teeny bopper girls, they want fluff. That's, that's their demographic. So you, know, yeah. you can really monetize doing anything you want, but yeah, we really do, I guess in the older generations that, you know, that haven't bit changed with the times as such, they really do exactly. just, I guess, demonize these new industries that, you know, weren't a job 20 years ago or weren't a career 20 years ago. And, exactly. you know, and they as we were talking about before, this. yeah, uh, yeah, really, yeah. just as we talked about before, in regards to that, you know, new jobs are being created that weren't there before. Exactly. So we've got to change with the times because everyone's so unhappy now. Whereas, as you said, yeah, it's, there's big money in, in depression, and it is good that we're becoming more aware of it, though. Um, yeah. That is in itself is a key. But then the question becomes: Well, 
was it more apparent back then or is it just something that we've now uh, I guess created over time you know as a society unknowingly just because of Instagram yeah. with you know everyone shows their best moments on Instagram or you know on uh, you know Facebook you know very rare that you Absolutely. actually you know, have it see rants and that sort of thing and it's all kept in house and um, but yeah, definitely, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. Very rare that you'd see little primary school kids that would be upset or depressed. It would be, you'd, there'd be the odd one where, you know, you knew that the yeah. family was brought up in, say, alcohol abuse or substance abuse, and they were born into that. Um, and they, yeah. you know, would certainly be the, the bullies of the school and that sort of thing. But it's really not until, you know, later on that they start to hit their teen years or even just before that yeah. they start to not, they lose that want to contribute and it just, everything kind of yeah. changes. Yeah, absolutely. And now you're getting like four year olds who are worrying about their weight. Like, how how does that happen? Yeah. And that's going to be sadly parenting. That's going to be like a, a parents who are always talking about you know getting fat or or worrying oh, about yeah. their weight. And and so that because we're, this is how like neuro linguistic programming I, I I love because I knew uh, in media it's called mass audience theory. So how does the media impact you? And there's all these different theories around it. And it's yeah. it's it's dangerous to simplify it because we all have defenses against it mm. and i really wish media was taught at primary school even if it was just a real simple this image is fake you don't need to compare yourself to these people um, and that would build onto emotional intelligence but we're just yeah. programmed we're programmed by our media diet like we are our, our food diet we're programmed by who we hang out with like it's a it's almost just too common now like everyone says it and it's true that you're pretty much the average of the five people you hang out with and you need to change yeah. your tribe if you want to change your life but we're also programmed by the words that we use. And I, I don't know how true the statistic is. I imagine it's worse, though, that it takes 20 positive comments to undo one negative comment. And I certainly, it, well, it feels worse than that to me. But not only is it <laughs> external comments, but it's internal. So if, you're, if you say to yourself, um, oh, I always mess up presentations, your brain's just like a computer. Your, your brain goes, okay, okay, Darren, I've got the command. I put it in. We always mess up presentations. So it becomes a yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy. And if you just say, oh, I, I always fail, I always mess up. Like you, you wouldn't allow like, a friend to say that about you, so, but we'd say far worse things to ourselves. So Absolutely. the neuro-linguistic programming yeah. element is just to watch that and change your language. So um, let's say, uh, again, just because we were talking about students, uh, students would say, oh, I have to go to college or I have to go to work, people might say. You don't have to go Do to you college. Want you to? don't yeah. have to go to work. <laughs> it's, it's you you choose to you choose to go to I'm college. a college dropout twice <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the and the consequences are rarely as bad as you think so if if you say oh if I don't go to work uh, what happens oh well um I might get a bit of a disciplinary probably not though second time I choose not to go to work I probably would get a disciplinary but that takes a long time right they like, Verbal warning, second verbal warning, written warning. Oh, it's it's hard warning. to fire someone. Like my yeah. uh, my story, but prior to uh, working for myself was I was a state level medical practice manager. So you oh, know, wow. I, I was dealing with stuff all the time. And there was one staff member that I wanted to fire for years. And HR was like, "Oh no, you got to like show that you've tried to help. Um, yeah. You know, coax them through." And I was like, "Well, I've tried that, and they're lazy. It's it's not going to help." And they're like, "Oh, but we can't. We don't get sued. Blah blah." I was like, if this is our yeah. business, they'd be gone a long time ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly right. So, so then I think, okay, maybe eventually I get fired. So what happens then? Oh, I just need to find another job. And what if I can't get another yeah. job? Well, I guess I can't make rent, so I'll have to move in with like parents or friends or something. And then yeah. you recover, and eventually I'd bounce back. And that's pretty much a worst the worst case scenario. It's never yeah, that bad. Absolutely. We were so no. We're so scared of failure because of our education system that um, nobody wants to experience it. And... Um, that's it and, and, this and one back. yeah i was, I was just gonna, gonna say, say yeah like and and one thing with uh, with entrepreneurs that you know in this uh this this frame now where it's we're starting to basically adopt that failure is a good thing because we then learn yes. and, and fail forward basically yeah so a failure is a good thing as long as we don't you know become homeless it's, <laughs> it's exactly you know, right little failures and, and learning from it because you know failure isn't a bad thing i just use failure as feedback it's only when we've exactly stopped right. trying that we failed. That's it. That's, that's the only, and, my two cents on, on failure. Like it's, I only consider it a bad thing if you stop trying. Exactly. And like one of the things I did with NLP is like a timeline exercise. So you go back in the timeline of your life to find you yeah. when you had the skills that you need today. Because at some point you were amazing. And if you're looking at kind of mental health, at some point in your life you didn't have a mental health issue. So it's in you not to have it. 
Um, and yeah. in, in terms of failure, you know, you've learned to, to roll, to stand up and to talk. Like at some point when you were like 18 months or 12 months or two years, you were amazing. You never said, ah, oh, walking's really hard. You know what? This isn't yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, every single one of us my legs. Learned, <laughs> exactly we all basically taught ourselves to walk on our own um, and we and we learned all these amazing things like my daughter she's coming up to you she can use snapchat it's insane and and she her, and she loves it and she loves solving things um but again that gets beaten out of us during education and as adults um because we're scared of what other people think we're scared of failure we're scared of looking bad in front of other people uh, yeah, and, and I the love... lessons we're structured to learn is, is crazy. Like in school, I didn't learn anything about tax. I, was, I need to know that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't, didn't learn about tax, didn't learn about compound interest, entrepreneurial um, tendencies, didn't learn about uh, emotional intelligence, didn't learn how to, how to deal with heartbreak, uh, d- deal with going to a funeral. We didn't learn, yeah, we learned nothing of value. Yeah, I found Sesame Street had more value in emotional intelligence than it did in school. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and and what self-respecting teenager wants to sit there and watch Sesame Street? So, I mean, it's, oh, it's really it's it's whatever you learn as a small child, and that's the end of it. <laughs> exactly right. It's it again, but again, watching my daughter, she she loves like children's TV. She loves YouTube, and I'm watching it, thinking, where does this come from, uh, or what programming is it having on her? And you'll sometimes see yeah. her do something she's seen on TV, and I'm like, ooh. Um, I remember very early on, I had to stop playing zombie games. I was playing one called um, Seven Days to Die when she was really small. And there was a point okay. where I realized she was paying attention. And I was like, okay. Oh, our brains, okay. I, don't yeah. think our, I don't think our brains know that that's not real. You know, like, our brains are the same as they were like thousands of years ago. Like, they yeah. can't tell the difference between reality and, and fiction. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's scary the impact we're having on our brain. Oh, absolutely. We even say like the 40s or even... Yeah, let's use the 40s, for examples, when there yeah. wasn't really any uh, CGI. It was, you know, really just yeah. you'd have your, your screens. If you saw Avatar today, yes. back in the 40s, you would lose your mind because that is clear as day. Um, I bought a yeah. – um, I'm not really big on buying, like, fancy things, but I bought a TV a while ago because it was, like, super cheap, massive TV for, like, dirt cheap. So I was like, all right, done. <laughs> it's got a 3D <laughs> setting in it. And I'll tell you what, watching Avatar on 3D is just – Amazing. Like, I wish I haven't overwatched Avatar because like, the graphics of it is such a good film. Um, they need to bring more Amazing. films out like that on a small tangent. But you know, my point is that in the 40s, if you watched Avatar back then for the quality of picture yeah. that there is now, you would not be able to tell the difference. You would think, what is that? Like, if that was on a huge Absolutely. screen, you'd just be like, wow, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen that with war games. I, I can't remember now, but there was a time when there was some war footage shown on like the news, but it was actually footage from Call of Duty or something. And like the journalists yeah. just could, or the researchers just hadn't spotted that it was it was not real. Just yeah, yeah. Oh and yeah, there was a, do... a thing. Yeah, back. Uh, sorry, cut you off there. Yeah, a few years back uh, for one of the new Call of Duties. Um, I think I believe it was Singapore got bombed, and so there was a big fake news press release that Singapore had been bombed. And then it came out that Call of Duty was actually doing it as a promo because that was part of their <laughs> storyline campaign. Um, That's and they obviously got slammed for it because people are like, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but totally. Yeah, you couldn't tell. Yeah, just the graphics were just but, amazing. But what's interesting, I don't know if you remember, but way back in the day, I'm not sure, maybe it must be 40s, I'm not sure, but Orson Welles did a, a War of the Worlds on radio. And from oh, what yeah, you can and tell, everyone was, sat and listened because they didn't know it was fake. Yeah, they thought, they thought Martians had invaded the planet. But why yeah. wouldn't they? They, they? they trusted the conventions with the radio. They trusted the voice of authority. Just, uh, well, yeah. that's it. I mean, it's only now we're learning to basically filter information because there's so much noise that yes. we pick and choose what we want to listen to. Whereas, yeah, back then, it was the, the radio was the authority and yeah. um, you know, television was the authority. And that's how old school advertising worked so well because you saw a billboard and all it had to do was say, yeah. Eat Campbell's soup, and you're like, all right, I'm yeah. going to do that. Whereas now it's like, that's it. Like, no, like, I want ratings, I want Google reviews, I want to hear about you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's in it. Um, you know, is it healthy? So <laughs> we're, we're really learning to filter information, which is a good thing. Like, it's, it's fantastic, but then at the same time, it really gives it, it can be overwhelming. And I think coming back to the whole mental health thing, 
learning how much is out there. They, they say that those that are very, very intelligent are more likely to get depressed because they they basically learn more about what they don't know. Um, and yes, they raise, you know, especially those that aren't religious for those that are just, you know, for, um, you know, they don't yeah. believe in anything after life. It's just the end. Then, you know, depression is a lot higher. I get that. There's loads of movies that have informed my um, new way of looking at the world. I just thought we're like dystopian movies, but now I'm starting to think, okay, there's more going on there. The Matrix being one, obviously, yeah. and we can joke about being you know, entrepreneurial or, or trying to live outside the system. Um, and if people are happy in the system, that's fine. But there's days when I just think, ah, oh, if I could take the... There's a guy in The Matrix, I think it's called Cypher, who goes back into The Matrix and has his memory wiped. And sometimes I think, oh, that might be a nice thing to do. Oh, yeah. But the, yeah, there's, other, there's one just, scene, oh, sorry, yeah, I was just saying, there was one scene where a guy, he's eating a steak, uh, and he's with that's um, the, one. The, the bad virus dude, yeah. uh, I don't remember his name, but yeah, he's just sitting there eating a steak, and I was like, you know what, I know this isn't real, but it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, I don't care, yeah. I just want to be there. There's one yeah. called uh, In Time with Justin Timberlake, and it's the one where they've got, once they hit 21, uh, this glowing kind of countdown appears on their arm, and they've got a year to live. But all money yeah, is Yeah, on their wrist, yeah. Time. And they, you can exactly. bet it with, uh, in poker and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, but so if you buy a coffee, a, a, like a cup of coffee costs five minutes, and you get paid yeah. in time. And, but that's not fake. You know, that's, um, you know, exactly. The buy, concept is still uh, real to a degree. Like, you know, exactly. certain things will actually take time off of our life. So, you know, you're buying some yeah. things and... And then it does actually deplete, but, you know, that very just few, whether it's a, only a few microseconds or if it's pretty bad, you know, a minute sure. or so. Like, it's, sure. you know, it's, it's a real thing. But, Some people die but at even if, 50, 40, yeah. Oh, man, that's scary. But even in terms of yeah. just how much time does it cost you to pay for that? So, you know, if you're mm. spending, you know, if you buy a game for yeah, like 40, um, 40 pound or $40, how many, how many hours do you have to work to get that? And it's worse when it's something disposable, like a, like a coffee, because you think, wow, I just had to work 15 minutes to pay for this coffee. Like, yeah, I, I'd exactly. rather it's gone in one minute. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, you know, a game you want to get some value out of, but uh, um, yeah. <laughs> and there's tons yeah, like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I, there's loads of movies, which even The Hunger Games it makes me think, um, particularly in terms of poverty and, and luxury. Um, yeah. In terms of, how there'll be some people who, because I think there's a lot, you, you can change your core programming. A lot of us say, you know, the world isn't fair and um, I should have this, I should have that. And that's just ego. I, I, I've yeah. been programming myself to think the world isn't fair and it's not fair in my favor. Like I'm so lucky, I, I can never complain because it's just, you know, I'm born now with, as you said, like, can you imagine growing up and, and seeing like a game like Skyrim? Like if my 14, 15 year old self could see Skyrim, he would just be like, you've won the world. Like, do you even oh, go out of the it. house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then we've got all this kind of, um, uh, you know, the Marvel films even, again, spoilt with those, but all this opportunity, able to connect on the global level, you know, it's, we're just winning. But it's so easy yeah. to feel sorry for ourselves. Oh, definitely. And it's, it's you know, really a two-edged sword because, I mean, look at, say, now with, uh, like, your um, your e-games where, you know, there's, there's a massive industry where people compete playing video games. And some of these kids are yeah. taking away six, seven figures just for playing video games. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's crazy about how, you know, connected we all are in the world and we can really do anything now. But then as that double-edged sword because there's so much opportunity and we're all seeing the best of, then it's so much easier to get depressed. Whereas back, yeah. back in the day, it was just, it was, it was a simplistic lifestyle and it was no big deal. It's like you work your nine to five, which was simple. And That's it. Uh, look at, you know, even two generations ago where you would stay in one job forever. Like that was it. Yeah. Once you started, that was you done. But now, you know, the robots are coming. You can get made redundant just because it's... Because we're, we're not people. I mean, it's getting better, for sure. But yeah. we're not people. We're expenses. We're, you know, the staff cost in most companies is the biggest cost. So as soon as things get tight, it's like, well, who are we going to cut? And it's not who are we going to cut. It's like, you know, which number or, or which, you know, how much yeah, money they're making. It's not, it's not like a person, it's, Deborah yeah. from... Exactly. Of um, course. It's, you so, know, it's, it's not, sorry, Deborah, we're going to have to let you go. It's just, all right, well, employee seven through exactly. 40 we're gonna yeah, have to we, let go but in, uh, in your grocery exactly. stores do you have the self-serving checkouts yes yes so there's um, there's and, one perfect and, example where 
that's you know slash jobs just because it's just yeah. automation which is but then at the same time it's created new roles because then there's self-service checkout automation technicians <laughs> exactly right and even even with those uh, they do, they've done it in banks as well and in fast food as well it's not they don't get rid of the whole workforce they get rid of a percentage so as long as you're the top yeah. 10 20 30 percent in your field you should be okay so what are you doing every single day to make sure that you're the best um, you don't even have to be the best, but you need to be up there. And I certainly take being the teacher seriously in that way. You know, I want to be you know, cutting edge and pushing forward. But also in terms of games, I was going to say Skyrim is a good example because there's so many people living, spending more time in games doing things that they should do in real life. And I love games. I want to play them all the time. But I remember yeah. <laughs> in a game called Fable 2, <laughs> in Fable 2, I chopped wood for like an hour because it got okay. like an achievement or something. But Skyrim yeah. is a good example because... You know, I went, um, you could be climbing a mountain and my wife would come in and be like, why are you heading up the mountain? And I'm like, I just want to see what's up there. Like, I wanted to explore every area in Skyrim, but I don't yeah. in where I live. Like, I haven't explored villages. <laughs> near, near me. Or if you go to yeah. a new town, you talk to every NPC, just in case they say something interesting. But I'll be at a party yeah. and I'll talk to two people. And I'm like, you, I'm getting more value out of a game. I'm exploring a game and also changing jobs more. Like in Skyrim, it's mad. You'll, you'll be an assassin and you join a thieves guild and you go be a companion. And yet we, we kind of get stuck in real life to be like, oh, I'm doing this job now until I die. No. If oh, we live absolutely. our life like a computer yeah. game, we can totally win. And, we, and go in and get... If we, if we had like a heads up display and we could see our own skills tree and I could be like, okay, this is me, uh, my presentation skills. This is my like, uh, I don't know, running skills. This is my... Uh, English yeah. skills. Right? I want to level skills. up. They're like, I want to grind that out. Like, right? I wood for an hour to get that um, you know, exactly. point. Is is just the grind in, in those games. So, you know, to do that in real life, the ones that do grind are the ones that succeed. Hands exactly. down. But we, you know, it's the shit that no one wants to do, but you get an achievement for it in, in case in life. Exactly well, right. You get financial security or you get a new car or you get a house or you can support That's your family. It. Exactly. And that's the thing. I, I think entrepreneurs have this uh, issue sometimes that um, particularly if it's a field where you need to be charging more money like there's a joke isn't there that if you're a sole trader or a business owner you charge too little and you need to add it by like 20 percent and then add more or something like that um, yeah and always undervaluing. the reason yeah we're all yeah undervalue it but the reason you do it has to be out of love like star wars again is it dark side stuff light side stuff and you know in the future you know, our parents are going to get older. They might need to go into a home, whatever. You know, if something happens to my wife, my daughter, can I financially help them? Like, if, exactly. if I lost all of my income today, how long could I survive? Or how many months could I survive? And even down to how many people can I help? When, you know, what charity is going to give to you or, or, or whatever? Like, um, yeah. if you have influence and, and money, you can do that. You can, you can, yeah, just help more people. And it needs to be love. It needs to be for your future. Like Emily, uh, my wife and I, uh, we've got our daughter, Evelyn, she's amazing. But I think we'd like to adopt at some point because we suddenly okay. see, hearing lots of horrible stories about you know, uh, kids who aren't as privileged as our daughter. So it's like, well, yeah. we need money to do that, you know? Um, yeah, definitely. That's really interesting you say that, yeah, because yeah, adoption now, it's, it's, you know, once again, we're coming back to a bit the whole, you know, being more connected with the world where it's not yes. only just, you know, you can adopt there, you can travel across the world and adopt from anywhere, which is, you know, phenomenal. Yeah. But then on the flip, you know, and it really helps in, you know, areas that are really impoverished and, and struggling. Because um, coming back yeah. to earlier when you mentioned, um, you know, those, those two different sides of, of poverty and wealth, when uh, I went to the Philippines yeah. only a few months ago, yeah. and the difference in wealth was crazy. Like there was yeah. one in the business district, you know, it, it stacks of millionaires. Um, of yeah. the 200 billionaires in the world, three of them were, you know, living where I traveled, you know, um, in the yeah. city there, um, in the Philippines, whereas the difference in poverty where I was staying, like it was a really nice hotel and I was suspicious why it was so cheap. <laughs> and it yeah. was just because the area was so bad that I, I filmed a vlog for it for my YouTube channel just because I really wanted to take it all in and yeah. share that experience. Um, you know, a lot of uh, you know views outside of the car window because it was a business trip. So, you know, I wasn't really doing a lot of travel. But there was one street that I actually didn't feel comfortable taking my phone out of the out of my pocket sure. and film because I genuinely felt uncomfortable because it was just and it was only a few streets from my hotel. So this was smack bang the C B D. Where it was just exactly. a street of just tents and just empty cement bags and there was literally a naked baby like standing in the middle of the street crying. 
And yeah. I'm just like, shit, like, you know, where's the parents? But they're all just, yeah. just let them run free because it's just there. Like, don't leave the street. But, you know, I didn't want to bring my phone out because there's four months wage for these people. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And that, that's exactly right. And, that, and I think there's people like, I, I wonder sometimes if people get annoyed with uh, Ty Lopez. I'm, I'm guessing you've probably heard of him. Like he's the yeah. guy who's always with his Lamborghini. I was watching him on Snapchat and I, I quite like him, but I was watching him on Snapchat and he was I appreciate uh, what looking he's at a, what he's achieved. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was looking at, he was saying he was going to buy this um, like penthouse apartment in this skyscraper in New York, I think. And he was showing the okay. views out. And I was like, from your apartment, you would be able to see the worst hit areas of New York that are like just ghettos. Like you'd be looking down ghettos and people were in massive poverty in the ghetto and you just spent like five million on or whatever it was on a penthouse which is your like third one or something like i yeah. just i think there's a vulgarity there i think if you've got that much, I, I i don't think i could do that myself i think um you know if i'm as successful as i hope uh i i, I don't want to be that person hoarding money i, I just think it's uh, i like yeah. jk Rowling a lot because i think she was on the billionaires list and is now okay. off of it because she's given so much money to charity. Good on yeah. her. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's the thing, like, even for the small, when I, when I was working uh, as a um, state-level manager there, you know, I was, I was earning six figures. And a lot of that I would just piss away because, well, not piss away, but I'd basically just give it away, like, not in cash, but I'd just say, oh, look, you know, let me shout lunch. And, you know, I took, you know, all my yeah. friends out one time for this, just all-you-could-eat oyster dinner and, and, you know, just trying yeah. to share that wealth, which... You know, it's, it's, I guess when you reach a certain level, you're either going to go one of two directions. You're either going to hoard it or you're going to give it away. Um, and, you know, yeah. in some cases, you know, many, many multimillionaires and billionaires do it for tax purposes. Um, but then yeah. there's some that are just philanthropists. Like look at Bill Gates yeah. where he yeah, has yeah. given away more money than most of us would ever even consider seeing in a lifetime. And that's amazing. Totally. And sure, it helps him in tax, but he doesn't do it for that reason. He's just a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, but then uh, another lesson we can learn is uh, the mistake I've always made is as I earned more money in my life, I found new bills. So I got a nicer house, and yeah. I got a, you know, nicer clothes, and I got a nicer car. And I, I, you know, I think Warren Buffett didn't do that. Like Warren Buffett lives in the same like he's a billionaire, I think, but he lives in the same house he lived in. You know, when not when he was starting, but when he first started to get successful, he didn't keep yeah. buying. And I, I quite like that. And whenever. You know, I see friends, they get a promotion or whatever. I'm like, do not find more bills. Like, like you don't have to, like, hoarding money and it's one thing, but you can invest it and put it into banks, that's okay. But then the interest yeah. you're getting or the compound interest or the, you know, the, um, the money you're making from businesses, you can then be generous with. Like, you, yeah, um, I, I like that idea because, you know, we want to make sure our, our kids are going to have an income. Um, so you want that kind of yeah. generational wealth, but it gets obscene at some point. Billionaires just, yeah, even, even <laughs> like, I, I, my wife and I joked, I think there's a thing called a Euro Millions, which is like uh, a lottery that's all over Europe. And okay. the winning amount was 134 million. And I was like, if we win wow. 134 million and don't immediately give away a million, so, sorry, 100 million, then yeah. we're scum. <laughs> like, oh, like, 100%, we, yeah. We don't need yeah, it. I completely 134 agree. million is too much money for me to comprehend. <laughs> yeah yeah if, if you've it's won that you haven't earned it and you've just been given it out of nowhere to not give a lot of that yeah. away is just crazy you know exactly. if you've earned a different scenario but just to but sure. even then like you don't need that kind of wealth and, and not to say i don't want to earn that kind of money but it's just you know you can utilize it for different things um but yeah basically, totally. you know in economics it's for every dollar you earn extra 50 cents of that you'll then spend on yeah whether it is new bills or you know a new yeah, lifestyle exactly. and and they say that from 150k onwards, your happiness doesn't change. Up until yeah, 150k, exactly. then you know the support for your family can increase and all that. But 150 plus, yeah. it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe that yeah. entirely. Um, yeah, It'd be nice to. Oh, that, that's yeah, really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't want it <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, Darren, let's let's get into a bit more about uh so you uh, have a martial arts studio as well you run one of those that's that's awesome what uh what yeah, yeah. um so it was it was with a global brand uh called crazy monkey defense and and they oh, were nice. a brand that looked at um 
it was life performance through martial arts. So it's not so much about, you know, um, competing with the other person. It's about managing your ego and the battle being within. It's with, you know, while someone's trying to hit me, <laughs> can I stay calm? Okay. <laughs> can I manage my anxiety? Can I manage my fears? Can I manage my frustration and my anger? Um, so it's really a, a, a way to develop tools to help you in life. Because fear-based yeah. martial arts is just dumb. Like, the, the planet is safer than it's ever been, really. Um, there's a great book called, I think, Angels of Our Better, Angels, uh, uh, Angels of Our Better Nature, I think it's called, um, that goes okay. into this. We're, we're not likely to get attacked anymore. Statistically, the media wants to think that we are, but really we're not. So it becomes a really expensive like, insurance policy against being attacked. So we, I want to make yeah. sure you're getting something In the something Western else world, especially. Exactly right, for sure. So, and, and you so need some to countries, check not so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Western world, I completely agree with you. But then I think in the countries you're talking about, like, knowing a martial arts is not going to stop a guy with like a machete oh, that, or that's, a that's gun. That's or... right. Like, uh, I watched a, a film recently, and, uh, you know, it's spoiler alert here. Uh, it's called Jungle. It's basically with uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Um, it's actually a 2017 okay. film. Um, yeah. So hopefully you're not going to watch it because this kind of ruins the, uh, the ending. <laughs> no worries. Um, but basically, the, and the reason I get on this is just because the very, very ending, because um, the, the premise of the film is that in the 80s, so yeah, only as recent as, you know, um, a few years ago, you know, a few decades ago, where um, these guys are backpacking and traveling and some guy says, well, I want to take you to show you this um, out in the, I believe it was the Boliv Bolivian jungle, it's somewhere in South America, and he said, well, I want to take you on this tour and show you this tribe that, you know, no one knows about, and there's gold there, and, um, you know, it's a fantastic film, I really recommend watching it, but basically they go through, and, and uh, Daniel Radcliffe actually gets lost, and it's a true story as well, um, he actually gets lost in the jungle, um, and everyone gets split up, and at the very end, um, I won't let you know what happens with Daniel Radcliffe, but one of the friends that goes off with the guide because they split up, it says at the very end that the guide was actually wanted from the authorities for taking people on tours like this, yet he had no experience. And there wasn't actually a tribe out where he was saying there was. And they wow. never saw that friend again. Wow. So, yeah, and up until then, I thought, yeah. wow, this is actually a really, like, you know, great film. Like, oh, it's still a great film regardless, but it was like a heartfelt film. And then I read that yeah. and I was like, Fuck, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, totally. that made me really sad. I was like, that's, that's yeah, awful. Yeah. Like, what would have happened to him? Because the guy was out there, you know, he had a machete. Um, that was what yeah. he was doing, chopping down everything. So what happened to this guy? Like, you know, if, if he got hacked up with a machete, like, yeah. wow. Like, you know, and just to even comprehend that that really happens is just crazy. Whereas, yeah, in the yeah. Western world, it doesn't really happen these days. I mean, there are, you know, mass shootings here and there, but just for just your general day-to-day -day safety, the statistics of it is, is very minimal. Yeah, um, so, yeah, the, exactly. the media really has really played up the, the dangers of going out. And, and I guess that's how terrorism really wins in a certain degree where they make you fearful of doing certain things. But at least the mass population has just kind of said, well, in certain areas of the world, we're just going to move forward. And, and that's, you know, yeah. really helped to overcome that to a degree. I mean, it's still like, a very real thing, but, yeah. Like, and I think... I think it's in the UK, you're more, far more likely to be killed by a cow than terrorism. But no one really picks up on that statistic. <laughs> Particularly, we live in the north of England. We live in Cumbria, so there's cows everywhere. And they're a bigger okay. threat than terrorists. But we just don't, we don't filter that in. You know? We don't filter in um, the reality. We, we, you know, it's, uh, I guess, more dramatic when it's terrorists. Um, yeah, because it's, it's yeah, that, cows falling on people, isn't it? Uh, yeah, or just like I guess charging them sometimes. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. it's um, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Have so, you seen yeah, the cow charge? Whole... They're actually pretty sprightly. I've seen it happen once, but it was more of a playful oh, really? jest, and oh, nice. uh, it was on a hill, and it managed to get air. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know the cow. Really? <laughs> nice. Yeah, actually, I have. I saw there was a video. I, th I think in the winter uh, in Cumbria, they're put into like indoors to, look, to I guess to keep them warm and alive. And then in the summer when they're let out, they spring around, they jump around like puppies. It's, I saw a yeah. video of it. it, was, it yeah, was that's kind of, of what I saw. And I was like, that's really cool. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen that before. Even with YouTube, I've never seen that. <laughs> totally. Um, so the martial arts really you know, got me into stoicism, got me managing my, helping help manage me, managing my ego. I mean, that's a, that's a tricky task. You know, so you read like uh, Ryan Holiday's <laughs> um, book. Uh, yeah. I can't remember what his book's called. The Obstacle is the Way, which is about stoicism. Um, but it also gives you confidence to be able to take care of yourself and um okay. and that enables you to manage your fears which is nice because in reality 
you know, that you're not likely to be attacked. But, but holding yourself well, you, know, you give off confidence. Um, you, it's a nice way to manage anxiety as well. Um, yeah. Because again, it's, it's what's the worst that can happen. And so if someone's yelling at you, whether it's in the customer service scenario or, or whatever, the worst that can happen is maybe they punch you. I've been punched a lot of times in martial arts. It's not that yeah. big a deal. Like the, the thought of it is way yeah. worse than what it actually feels like. And that's a Definitely. lesson for life. Like we can worry about, oh, what's the worst that happens if I mess up this presentation or what if I'm late for work or what if no one buys my book? What if? It doesn't change yeah. you as a human being. It doesn't change your ability to be generous, to be kind, to have integrity, to love your family. Like, none of those things change. That's all within your control. This external stuff isn't important. But it, but yeah. it was a fun martial arts. Um, I, I grew it. I think we moved studios three times because the demand is getting bigger each time. Um, but it's like, weirdly, it's been five years. And so um, it, it's, it it's like a hobby that got out of control. Yeah. yeah. And um, but I think it's, I can feel myself moving away from it. Um, um, like I'll always right. do it. I'll still have it there. But I'm, I'm hoping other trainers will take more of the sessions over time. Um, but I'm ready to move on to newer things. And um, uh, I, I, the nature of martial arts is it's a lot of evenings and I'd rather be at home with my daughter and my wife. That's fair enough. You know, and, and it's about personal growth. And if, if it's something you've really yeah. enjoyed for five years and now you've, yeah, you've yeah. done that and now you want to move on, there's nothing wrong with that. Like you've, you've learned some lifelong skills that you can now apply anywhere. And, you know, exactly. coming back to the whole getting hit in the face is more scary thinking about it than it actually happens. I completely agree with you. Like, you know, getting hit martial arts is, is just something that when you're training, um, cause I, I, you know, when I get the time, I'll try and fit in training here and there as well. And, uh, cause a friend owns a, a gym and, um, yeah, just, just the training, those that actually do fight in a, a controlled setting, they're actually a lot yeah. more level headed in situations that could otherwise get out of control. Like, you know, I'm, I'm 29 now and there's, you know, very, very, you know, if you're going out saying, cause there's a lot of millennials in this group. So, you know, with the, yeah. you know, the whole drinking thing on a Saturday night, it is yeah. a 99% chance that I will walk away from something that's, you know, coming, you know, going down. It's, um, yeah. there's even been cases where I remember once it was just some drunken idiots and some guy made a, a comment about my friend's uh, pink shirt. And I was like, hang on, mate, you're wearing a pink shirt as well. He took a swing <laughs> at me. I ducked and I was like, I pushed him. I was like, dude, fuck off. Like, I'm done. And that was yeah. it. I literally just walked away from that despite the guy had actually just tried to take a massive, almost like KO swing at me. And I was like, I'm yeah, yeah. seeing this coming from a mile away. I'm not going to get hit by yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. And if you do get involved, like, it's, you know, we get a lot of um, like doctors and nurses who train with us because it's a, a healthy environment, I think. And um, yeah. the amount of like one punch fatalities, like you hit a guy, oh, he yeah. falls, hits his curb. Like, that's you in prison. It's like, was it worth it? What do you, yeah, it's, definitely. Violence is never worth it. It's just easy of to course. walk away. But, it, but it's always some source. Oh, yeah. No, you go ahead. You love what? Oh, sure. I was just going to say that these in Australia, I don't know how you guys um, kind of, um, you know, position it, but I love how they've actually positioned that now. They, they label it as a coward punch. So if, if you get yeah. a, a one hit KO Absolutely. and someone gets knocked out, then that's jail time. And because, you know, yeah. dying is a real thing. Like there's a, an organization here in Australia called the Sammy D Foundation, um, which is great yeah, yeah. for, you know, mental health and for all these different things. And it's because there was a father, um, he started the foundation because his son, Sammy D, actually got, a, got hit with a cow punch and died. Yeah. Um, and they started a foundation that's... to educate others about it, which is, you know, uh, it's a really sad beginning, but it's, you know, fantastic that they've done that to try and educate. And, and I do love how the, the media has labeled it as a coward punch because, you know, back saying even in the 80s, it was, oh, he got KO'd. Like, you know, we, we've yeah. all seen Friday, like, oh, you got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Whereas, yeah. You know, now it's, it's really the, it's shifted. So, you know, it's great in that regard. But uh, yeah, sorry, Darren, you are saying. It, it's, just, it's a failure to communicate. Um, I, I end up um, breaking away from <laughs> yeah. Face Monkey and, um, and now we do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well because that's growing. But it's, um, yeah, I, I think it's a nice thing to do. But yeah, the, the, the failure to communicate is what's frustrating me the most. And I found that there's a lot of like, you know, strong gym, kind of uh, more hyper-masculine martial artists who think they're strong and they want to compete. And that just impresses me less and less as I get older. I just think okay. um, there'd be people who, who think they're tough because they can fight in the ring, but they can't have a, but they're cheating on their partner because they can't okay. you know, have an adult relationship. Um, and yeah. I think watching my daughter give, 
it's juvenile, exactly. Or you get people, you know, you know, been running business for a long time, but they'll like cancel their payments, like do PayPal payments or whatever, and won't talk to me about it. And I think, oh, okay, wow, worst you, you thing thought ever. You, <laughs> yeah, you, it's like, and I'm a really approachable guy. You know, they, they, people come and go. It's part of business. I don't take it personally, but they, they yeah. don't want to have an awkward conversation. I'm like this is insane. You don't want to have an awkward conversation, but you think you're tough and you you will kind of get in a ring and do this. It's just it's just the, the the man box and toxic masculinity gets wrapped up in it, and I get less less and less impressed. I think um, yeah. I think just violence and war is just an absolute failure to communicate, and I get I get yeah. stunned that we have you know like. I was listening to a podcast with like a high level FBI negotiator and he was talking about all the ways you can get somebody to uh, kind of back down and see your, see your point of view. And he's like, why are okay. world leaders doing this? Like how, how are we, how is any yeah. world war in 2017? Well, just, there's, there's big money in it. That's just the unfortunate reality. Where it. It's trillions of dollars with a T. It. So it's, yeah. you know, that's, that's just the unfortunate reality. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I, yeah, I think martial arts is fun as long as it's playful. And it's, uh, but you don't take, you know, if you're sparring, you don't take it personally. Like if somebody, no, you you don't. Know, if I'm yeah. playing chess and somebody takes my queen, I don't take it personally. If someone rugby tackles me in rugby, I don't take it personally. But if someone hits you yeah. in boxing, so, oh, and you have an emotional response. But your, the aim is to manage that. You know, you can have the response, yeah, but exactly. it doesn't then dictate your actions, which is just true of life. It's true of dealing with trolls. It's, it's, you know, it's true of, um, um, any any obstacle and failure and success you have in life it's how are you going to manage your response yeah absolutely no i 100 percent agree but yeah this has been really interesting so everyone that's tuning in <laughs> so you know if, if you're on the replay um just uh, let us so type in a hashtag team r for in the comments we'd love to hear from you know that you're getting some value out of this um yeah darren this has been awesome so far so mate uh yeah let's let's have a what else do you want to chat about while uh, while i've got you on the, the phone here Man, I love it. I love, I love a conversation like this. It's just kind of, I feel like I've been a bit rambly, but um, I like how I'm enjoying it. I'll be honest. Really this, nice is, this is thing. great. Like, we, we got one viewer at the moment. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the um, get views. I, like, uh, I find that, yeah, although the group's only got 250 now, um, yeah, by, by the end of the week, we'll have at least 50 views. So, you know, this, this group is awesome. Like, they're really engaging. Uh, I actually appreciate every single one of you for, for listening in because, yeah, it's, Sometimes, you know, to, to get others' attention is, is quite difficult. Um, so for, for them to give us their time to, to view this, I'm, I'm really appreciative. The, the one thing I, I would say is um, there's a search for entrepreneurs to get kind of credibility, which is how the book idea comes up. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that I have no time. I think I've said this before. And you can do an amazing amount of stuff in like a couple of hours a week. Like they, yeah. coming to the end of the year, I started – you know, thinking differently in January of this year. So January 2017. Um, my daughter was born in 2016. That's the year I had postnatal depression. You know, just yep. didn't achieve anything. Which is crazy. Something like Got 10% it. of the US men have it. It's, it's actually crazy. Yeah, absolutely. But again, men don't talk about it because, you know, yeah. we're idiots. The men we don't talk about our emotions. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I started um, writing articles this year. And I've had articles, you know, in quite a few publications. So like Good Men Project, uh, there's The Mighty, which is about mental health, uh, Thrive Global, which is Ariana Huffington's new company. Um, where else? Uh, oh, there's another one. Oh, LeadX, which is a, a site I really like writing for. And it feels like to other people that I'm everywhere and I'm writing articles every week. Genuinely, yeah. I worked out today, I'd only written 10 articles this whole year. So I was That's averaging awesome. yeah. less than one a month. But because I wasn't being paid for it, you don't have, uh, no, no site has exclusivity. So you publish it on, I don't know, let's say the Good Men Project, if you can get into that. And then like a yeah. week later, you, you enter it into The Mighty. A week later, you enter it into um, Thrive Global. Then a week later, you yeah. put it on your LinkedIn profile. Then a link to later, okay. you put it on Medium, and you have it on your yeah. blog. So with one article, you can actually syndicate that out maybe eight to ten times. So Definitely. it feels like you're putting out way more content than you are. Um, and you're starting to act like your own publishing house. And yeah. no, I agree. On, on that, just quickly though, if you do have your own blog um, with Google yes. SEO rankings, it works, you hurt your rankings if Google finds the same article in several places. So if you've yeah. got an article that you're duplicating, say, eight, ten times, if you put it on your own blog, I would recommend having one piece on your own blog and then slightly changing the wording and then duplicate that article in all your other um, you know, facets and, and avenues. Just 
because you don't want to yeah. hurt your rankings in Google. So just a, a little tip there for, for you, Darren, and, and for all the viewers uh, listening as well. The, <laughs> but the, that's interesting because I'd heard, and it might be wrong, but I heard as long as you've put at the bottom uh, previously published and there was like a backlink, that Google were okay with it. But I don't know. You know to a degree, it. like it's 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 because the little spiders, what they do is they'll kind of crawl around um, and they will take in as much information as possible, but they, they do pick up key phrases and words. So that can certainly help. Um, but yeah, sure. for, for the best results, I would recommend at least just changing that a little bit. But just for your personal blog, for everything else, get that out there. Like Huffington Post yeah, yeah. and whoever else has that much exposure that they don't need yeah. to worry about the SEO rankings. <laughs> yeah, totally. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, the reason you can write for all these publications, if you're not paid, is you know, the internet's pretty much infinite. And in, in your, so you know, if you get it on, let's say, Thrive Global, which is... Um, taken on contributors you you're going to send the traffic there you're going to use your yeah. social media reach to be like hey everyone go look at this article and then if it gets enough i guess traction you know the publisher will see it and maybe start to promote it themselves maybe put it on their facebook page that kind of stuff um but it's actually pretty easy to to write and then you get that credibility you can put on your website hey well, I, I write for this site i write for that site and uh, it's amazing how many major um i guess kind of entrepreneurs this credibility seems to come from the fact they 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 were contributor to Forbes or half of their post. Um, it's it's interesting you say that because I actually had a guest yesterday and we were discussing exactly that where uh, I just mentioned that I wanted to get on uh, one of my goals is to you know be featured on Entrepreneur.com and, and Forbes and I spent mm -hmm. an arbitrary number which you know I said like ten years or something ridiculous because it, it really shouldn't take that long. But yeah, just sure. the, the the tip was just to reach out to just as many journalists. Yeah. within that area as you can and you know to, to really fast track that is you know first get featured on smaller publications and then from there yeah, use yeah. that social proof and leverage it to then when you do reach out yeah. to these journalists from entrepreneur.com or, or Forbes and say hey look I've actually been featured in x y and z um, and I'd love exactly to right. maybe guess right for you or you know maybe discuss you know an opportunity That's where it. you know we can mutually benefit one another because I can bring my audience to your page because I can you know write and you can learn from me. I've got the same goal, like to to get them to Huffington Post, but um, but so I go on Twitter, you on right, LinkedIn, yeah. you find every journalist or editor that works for Huffington Post, you make a list and you just engage, you like their stuff, you, you it's the whole Gary Vaynerchuk thing, isn't it? You know, jab 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 jab, uh, left yeah. hook, I think it is. Like you, oh, you support, yeah, yeah. you're kind, and then eventually you hope to to maybe get a kickback. But that's um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is really really achievable. And I heard recently. There's a quote from somebody who does write for Forbes, and he said at some point, you know, he'd keep sending off an, a, an article, but like, is this one okay? And they'd go back and forth and be like, maybe if we do this. And at some point, he was like, dude, we don't want one article. We want all of your articles. Like, this is time consuming. We want you to be like, hey, I've got 10 articles. Is, is this okay? And we want to see yeah. that you, you can handle being a writer, that you're regularly creating content like at the moment i haven't done it regularly enough so they say go look at my blog they're like, oh this guy writes an article maybe once every couple of weeks that's no use yeah. to us because i'm not okay. going to give them enough content right i am i'm not valuable whereas if i was writing yeah. an article a day they would be much more interested because you know, yeah statistically i'm going to have i'm more likely to have an article that's going to go viral or going to engage with somebody or or be something that they're going to like so it's just the numbers, and I can control that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, it's just more exposure. Well, yeah, absolutely. Grow who you are and grow your online footprint, and that's the whole point of you know this podcast, the online footprint project, is yeah. a project to increase not only my online footprint but all of my viewers and, and interview guests as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I think you will achieve that quicker than you think. You just, um, uh, yeah, just need to like. Keep moving forward. Keep, keep writing. Yeah. That's the main thing. Just keep writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, awesome. All right, well, Darren, I really appreciate this. This has been a fantastic um, chat. I've, we've both just waffled on. I've actually really enjoyed this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Games and films. It's, it's what brings everyone together. That's it. <laughs> so everyone, if you're tuning in, whether it's on uh, the Facebook Live uh, or it's uh, in the podcast, Basically, we'd love to hear from you. Anyone on the Facebook Live, just so we know that you've gotten value from this. If you're able to just, uh, in the comments there, just type in hashtag Team R, just as in letter R for replay. Love to hear from you. Uh, now, Darren, uh, before we go, do you have any shameless plugs uh, that you want to mention? Because, you know, that's what today's for, really, to promote you, promote your business. Uh, drop no them in the comment when you're done. But, yeah, I'd love to hear some, some shameless plugs you've got. 
<laughs> sure. Well, the main, main thing I've got is, is my book called Level Up Your Teens, which is on Amazon. It's only, I think, 99p or the equivalent, you know, in other countries. It's great for, yeah. um, to, it can help anyone. It's aimed at teenagers and helping them deal with life. But actually, it might be worth anyone reading just to see how easy it is to write a book. Like, you'll read it and be yeah. like, it's about, you know, it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to read. And hopefully, <laughs> but you'll get to the end of it and think, I could have done that. Good. You go do it as well. That'd be a fantastic. Yeah. Um, other than that, any, everyone's welcome to find me on all social media. Um, if you just Google me, you'll find me uh, pretty much everywhere. But it's uh, Downhorn or Downhorn77 on yeah. every platform, even platforms that I'm not active on because I'm a big believer in securing your username. So I think I'm on like I'm the same. Chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got Ross Mac 88 happen, and I have not touched Twitter, I reckon, in a year. <laughs> yeah. Got to secure it. Yeah. Um, but that's all the plug I need um, uh, at the moment. It's, uh, yeah, but feel free to connect and ask me questions or, or whatever. It's, um, uh, yeah, I'm happy to help. No, that's awesome. Well, Darren, I really appreciate this. If you're able to do us a favor and find us the Amazon link and then pop it in uh, this post at Absolutely. the bottom, that way everyone yeah, can yeah. have a look because to, to spend 99 pence to spend for an hour of your time is amazing value. Like to get a coffee for, yeah, for five bucks is, you know, 15 minutes work. And you'll drink it in five. So, you know, a dollar to spend an hour, hour and a half is amazing value. Yeah. So, you know, I really look forward awesome. to, uh, yeah, the link below. And then, yeah, I, um, you know, would love to read it as well. So, Darren, uh, thank you, you so I, much to everyone. Darren Horn. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I, all your members, because it's global, isn't it? I guess they're not all in Australia. They're yeah. going to be all over the world. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, I've got loads of reviews on the UK Amazon, but hardly any. I've got like two in America and I don't think anyone anywhere else. So if you're in other countries, that'd be amazing if you liked it and gave it a, a review. That's, and I there read them go. all. I think all authors do. We get, they mean a lot. <laughs> well, you need to. I mean, it's, it's all about using that feedback to, to basically fail yeah. forward and, and take that in and really utilize that so you know how to move forward for second and third publication because you know, I yeah, know exactly what right. I like. I don't need you to tell me what I like, but I want to know yeah. what you don't like. And yeah. to isolate that for a single review, don't change your whole book. But if, as a general consensus, you're starting to get, um, you know, uh, comments that certain things need changing, well, you know, that's something to really appreciate and listen to. And then you know that, all right, well, in that area, I'm lacking or I need to change this or that. So, you know, one bad review isn't in the world, but if it's 10, 20, 30 to constructively suggest, even if it's worded a little... Uh, poorly <laughs> uh, and they're, they're sure. a little abrupt in their comments uh, yeah if, if that's the general consensus then we can all use that to learn to basically pivot and fail forward sure and sometimes bad is is not bad sometimes bad can be profitable you know the transformers movies are not good movies but not, the, <laughs> filmmakers don't care that, that movie exactly. um, what was it 50 shades of gray that's a very bad book but it got made into it's a awfully bad written. Movie. Like it's, I, I haven't it's read it, but I've I've, sk I've read little bits and I've read reviews, and yeah, it's really yeah. poorly written. Like just Absolutely. the way they've structured it is awful, but it yeah. sells. <laughs> yeah, it sells. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yeah, Darren Horn here. So yeah, once again, a massive thank you. I really appreciate your time. Uh, this has been a fantastic chat. Uh, you know, thank you so much. So I hope that everyone's uh, gained some value insight. I certainly have. Uh, I've learned more than uh, we started. So. No, thank you again for your time, and, uh, <laughs> and it's been great to talk about video games and books. <laughs> yeah, totally. Good coming out, but yeah. All right, Daryl, yeah, thank you again so much. Uh, once uh, the podcast, because what I'll be doing is for the online audio footprint, I'll be stripping the audio from this and then turning it into a podcast soon. So uh, then nice. you're going to be featured not only in a Facebook group, but then also on a podcast as well. So you're going to get two levels of exposure. So. If anyone wants to get interviewed to promote their business, please uh, either comment below or message me um, privately and we can certainly hook that up. So Darren, once again, I appreciate you so much, man. So yeah, just uh, much respect for doing this and uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch and, and we'll chat soon. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. My pleasure. And thanks for staying up late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no worries. Cheers, dude. All right. Thanks, thanks Darren. See you, mate.